What's good, everybody? It's your boy Matthew Maley for MatthewMaley.com. I'm coming at you. I know I haven't had many of them recently, but I was able to get out and play some poker thanks to my boy Frankie. So, wanted to do a recap of the tournament and all the action. Let you know how guys, let you guys know how it went. So, as I said in my last poker recap video. Sadly, with the holidays, my Wells Fargo money running out, some other extenuating circumstances I don't want to get into, things haven't exactly been too flush on the old money side. So I really haven't been able to play anywhere near as much as I would like to, um, which, you know, kind of something you just got to deal with, you know? Life works in peaks and valleys, and I'm in a valley right now. But it's all good. It's going to turn around. Um, just got to stick with it. So because I haven't had much money, I haven't been able to play too much. And uh, like I said in my last video, outside of that video, um, I hadn't been able really to play at all. So my buddy Frankie, one of my really good friends, um, said for my Christmas present, he was going to buy me into the Talking Stick Casino Arizona tournament. So it is a $65 tournament, I believe. Um, yeah, 65 or 60, then we could get you 3,000 chips. For an extra five bucks, you get another thousand chips. And then you get a $20 rebuy at any time that you want for a thousand chips. I didn't realize that, which to me that's stupid. Say it's a $25 add-on, give me two grand of chips. That's dumb. So I didn't realize you could use the add-on at any and the rebuy at any time. So I bought the bought it for the tournament, got the add-on of a thousand. So I've got four thousand chips. And it's still technically on my rebuy chip. So, get there right as the tournament's starting. Um, and probably third hand in, um, I'm on the small blind. Pick up Queen 9 offsuit. Um, it was raised by like under the gun plus 4 maybe, plus 3. And folded all the way around to me. So, I end up calling. So, a big blind. Alright. Flop comes up 9 Eight, I want to say deuce or tray, pretty blank. I don't know why I just had this feeling that I was behind. I didn't know if it was an ace nine type of feeling, if it was a pocket pair type of feeling. I just I, I felt like I was behind, and it was tough because you know you flop top pair with a decent kicker. It's tough to tell yourself that you know it's a, it's a really difficult thing to say. No, you know what? Get out of this hand because in all honesty. What was I looking to flop? You know, I mean, why didn't I make the call in the first place if I'm going to muck top pair? So I check, dude checks, gets around to the guy who originally raised. He puts in a small bet. I mean a small bet. Like pre-flop, I think he raised to 150 on the floppy bet 150. So I didn't really view it as though the guy was, I didn't, he didn't look like that great of a player. So I didn't think that he was doing it to give me good pot odds to call. I really didn't. I really felt that it was just somewhat of a of an unknown as to what he should bet. Really, it should have been obvious that he was betting so little to keep me around because he did have a good hand, but whatever. So I ended up calling. So did the big blind. All right. Turn card comes out. A. I want to say it was a... I want to say it was a four, maybe a five. It didn't really matter. Um, short of, if I'm not mistaken, if somebody had like six, seven, I would have given him a straight. But I didn't see it as that. Maybe it was a four then. Maybe it wasn't a five. Um, because I don't think it changed the X that much. Again, I check. Again, big blind checks. This guy, again, bets 150. So now it's, I mean, it, there's no way that it cannot call. It, it, at this point, I mean, 450. There's 900 in the pot, so I'm betting 150 for 1,050. Come on, like that's almost 10 to 1. Obviously, I'm going to call, hoping that maybe I'll, you know, improve. If not, maybe I'll win on a showdown. I don't know. Didn't feel like it, but for that kind of odds, how could I not? So, again, I call. Again, the guy in the small, or in the big blind call. Really, even if I was, you know, at any two cards at that point, with those kind of odds, you're going to call. River card comes out a king. Okay, a little weird, you know, like, you never want to see an over, but, you know, I still didn't feel horrible about my second top pair. So again, I check, 
I'm really just hoping to take it down to the showdown here. Guy on the uh, fly, uh, big button, uh, big blind checks, goes around the guy originally raised, and he like made a move to his checks, and then kind of stopped for a second, and then said, I check. So I rolled over and said, you know, I got a nine, and he rolls over pocket jacks. The other guy didn't even show. Um, so don't know what big blind had, but I rolled over my nine, he showed pocket jacks. So my thought was, was correct that I was behind, I wish I could have seen, you know, mentally been there a little bit better so that I would have, you know, not lost, what, three, four, fifty in chips. But at the end of the day, that's really not bad. For a top pair, I could have lost a lot more with that hand. So that would hurt a little bit. Um, you know, just because you never want to start off with a loss. You just don't, you know. So I had a few more hands went, just kind of, eh, whatever. Um, get, was getting a lot of like ace fives, ace sixes, um, playable depending on position, but not in the position I was getting them. I was getting them a lot of them like first position, or I was getting a lot of them like after a raise and a call, just stuff that I, I couldn't really justify. So, really, kind of just treaded water a little bit um, for really the rest of the round. Picked up uh, ace jack, raised. Took down the blinds and annies, or blinds at this point. Um, had another hand where I had ace nine under the gun. I ended up letting it go. Just nothing like major. Then I pick up pocket sixes. So I'm on the button, and there were like, I want to say like four callers in front of me. So I bump it up like, I want to say, I believe the blinds were, I think they were 100, 200. Because I made it like 650. So it was a decent sized bet. Um, and I probably started the hand with about 2,000, I would say. Probably about 2,000. Um, maybe a little bit. No, probably like probably like 2,500. Probably about 2,500. Because I dropped the like 450 on that one hand. And then had like another hand that I dropped a decent amount on. So I was down about 1,000, I would say. Maybe 1,500. And I'm pretty start. You know what? I think we started with 2,500 chips, so I got the other ones down to 3,500 chips. Now that I think about it, so that would make that would make more sense. So I, I would say I probably had about 2,500 in chips. Raised to mid 23, let's say. Raised to 650, so I've got about 1,660 behind, 1,650 behind. Um, with again, pocket six is red and black. So. Amazingly, I was just fine taking it on the pot at that point. All four people called me. Amazingly, so the flop comes up, um, and I'm sorry, I wasn't on the I wasn't on the button. I was on the small blind. I was on the small blind because of what subsequently happened. So the flop comes up seven, yeah, seven five, like nine, I think. Maybe even a 10. I insta shove. I, at this point, I was almost wanting to rebuy. I didn't realize that it was just an add on for a thousand. I was almost just wanting to rebuy. So I insta shove. Figuring if somebody's got a 10 ball, eh, you know, whatever. But I'm hoping, you know, there's somebody with ace king, ace queen, ace jacks, get him out of there. Ace 10, I'm in trouble. So I insta shove. Fold, fold, fold. Comes around to the, to the last guy. And he, very kind of angrily, just kind of throws his checks in. And I, I said to him, 10's good. I said, you know, 10's good. Maybe it was a nine. Either way, I said, you know, whatever it was, was good. And I show my sixes. And he goes, oh, God, I thought you had ace-king. Okay. Shows me tray four. Again, flop is seven, five, ten. Trade four. So now I'm praying I don't get three of a kind. And I, 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 when he said, oh, I thought you had ace-king, we all kind of like looked at each other like, what do you mean? If I had ace-king, I was still ahead. Like, it didn't make sense what he was saying at all. So turn card hits, a tray. River card hits, a tray. So he wins with three of a kind. I mean, it was just the most ridiculous thing. Just seeing him peel off. Oh, there's a three. 
peel up. Oh, there's another three. It was, oh, it was so annoying. And just because, like, things have been going that way a lot through this whole experience in Vegas. So it really pissed me off. <laughs> really pissed me off. But, you know, what can you do? So, thankfully, he didn't have me covered. I had him out chipped by, I want to say, like, almost a thousand. So he was, he was a lot shorter than I was. But I also missed out on the rest of the pot, which was a pretty good sized pot. So I ended up rebuying at that point. So I had like like eighteen hundred somewhere around there. Um, he took a nice chunk off me. So I'm essentially at this point the blinds are one hundred, two hundred. I'm really just looking for a spot. Ended up uh, picking up Ace King raised. Nobody called me. Took it down. Um, ended up picking up Pocket Eight shoved. Got called by Pocket Fours, um, and my eights held. So I doubled up off of that, um, almost. I knocked this person out, actually, so it wasn't quite a double up. She was really short stacked, too. So now I'm about close to 4,000. Um, and then I pick up, right before break, um, I'm in, this same guy is in again, and he dropped a couple of hands. The guy took me out, or to chop me down. I pick up pocket kings. And I mean, literally, it's like the hand before break. And I kind of look at it, and I'm like, <laughs> so he was a. Uh, I want to say I was like one off of the button, and two other people had called. Of course, a bunch of people just got up and left. But it comes to me, and I ended up raising a hefty amount, um, probably four times a big blind, I would say. Probably like 800, um, and maybe even 850. Goes around, two people call, flop comes up, jack, blank, blank. Feeling, you know, really good. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Flop hit ace, ace, um, like ace, jack, four. Because the ace scared me, but again, I'm just like, whatever, if this is my time, you know, it is what it is. So it was, um, it would have been he acted first, and he bet. A small bet and I shoved and he ended up calling with a jack so thankfully I didn't raise pre-flop he had queen jack so I doubt he would have called my raise pre-flop so that was great going into the break now I'm up to like eight grand ish so feeling pretty solid about that honestly um go to break whatever kind of bemoan the beginning of the tournament which could have turned out a little bit differently but that's his life um so ended up, when I got back to the table, they brought a couple new people over, and I would say probably, probably five hands in, I pick up Ace Queen, um, raise, I think, two callers. Flop comes up King 10 4 something. So I've got the gut shot, whatever. Um, I end up, a guy, um, no, I'm sorry, I didn't raise, a guy shoved on me, I called, flop, um, he had jack, like, nine, I think, jack, eight, had to have been jack, eight, um, yeah, because the flop came up, king, ten, four, and turn card hits a deuce, river card hits a queen, uh, I'm sorry, no, no, I'm sorry, hits a jack, hits a jack. So he gets all excited. He's like, yeah, I hit it. I'm like, man, I got the straight. I got Broadway. And it, did, it took him a second. He's like, what? I'm like, man, I've got the straight. Oh, oh, oh. Like he even said before, he's like, when, when he was calling for a card, he was calling for, still for a jack. So I was like, dude, you got to realize the jack is going to give you straight. I didn't want to say that, you know, and jinx it. But that was actually a pretty decent pot because um, he had like, I want to say like three, four thousand. So that got me up to like twelve, thirteen ish. Um, then I had another. I was kind of chipping away, chipping away, and um, you know, just making moves. I made a, with Ace Nine. I raised on the button. Um, two people had already called. Everybody folded to me. I actually put a pretty good squeeze play on with King Queen. Um, a guy raised from under the gun. I think plus one or either. 
under the gunner, under the gun, plus one. Guy two away from him called. I put in a pretty hefty re-raise for probably about two-thirds of the initial raiser's stack. Um, and probably about half of the second guy's stack. Um, and they both let it go. So that was a decent pop for me. So I got up to probably about 15, 16 grand. So I then pick up Ace Deuce. And I want to say... I didn't play out. Well, actually, before that, I had pocket fours. Before that, I had pocket fours. Called this guy's all in. Um, he had ace queen, flopped an ace, turned another ace. I think even river to queen, so it was dead, like super duper dead. Um, so that one hurt me. That one chopped me down to probably about like 13, 12, 13, because I was up to close to 17, and that one hurt. Then next hand, I pick up ace deuce um, on, I want to say the small blind. No, it was on the big blind, yeah, because it was really weird. I picked it up back to back hands. Pick up ace deuce on the big blind. Um, it's like three people called all the way around to me. I call, I, I checked. Flop came out ace deuce. Like, all right. So small blind checked. I bet at it. Everybody folded, so I took on that pot. Then the very next hand, I pick up ace deuce again. So I ended up um, was raised by under by a two off the button. So I ended up calling. Big blind folds comes around to me. Me and uh, this guy were heads up. Flop comes up, queen, tray, deuce. So, like I said, again, I have ace, deuce. Um, two of them were clubs. And so I end up, I'm like, you know, let's see where I'm at. Take the lead. So I bet out. And he thought about it, and he thought about it, and he thought about it. And he ends up calling. And how he, how he did it really made me think that he was on the, on the flush drop. Just really made me think. Just like the way that he did it. He didn't raise, you know, something. If he's if he's got a good queen, he would probably want to get me out if I'm on the flush draw. So he might throw in a raise. He didn't. So I'm thinking, you know, I think I'm probably good with my deuce. A little scary, but I think I'm good. So turn card hits, not a club. Um, six, seven, whatever. So on the flop, I bet probably like 650. On the turn... I now bet, I think, 9, 9.50, 11.50. Thinks about it, thinks about it, thinks about it. Finally calls. All right. Don't know where I'm at. A little worried. But, you know, see what happens over here. River guard, total blank. Like, total blank. Again, it was a, a four, a seven, a... Somewhere in there. Might even paired the board. No, no, no. I think he did. I think it was runner, runner on the turn of the river. Paired the board. So I figured that's actually a good card for me. Because I figured the, the flush didn't get there. I'm thinking, you know, if I can fire bets out. He doesn't have a deuce. If he has a tray, I'm going to be able to push him off of it. Maybe he has a small pocket pair. You know, not sevens, obviously. But sixes, fives, nines. Somewhere in there that I could push him off. Maybe he thinks I have a queen. But I know I got to bet at it again. So I bet like 16.25. And again, he thinks about it. Didn't think about it as long as he did on the turn. And he's up making the call. And he had a queen. He did have queen, like queen nine, queen eight, somewhere in there. It's one pair, obviously. But so that one really hurt me. That one ended up cut, cutting me down pretty bad. And two hands later, we end up going over to a new table. So two hands later, it sucked. So I still had a lot of yellows, um, but it didn't look like I had many chips. I still had probably 6,000, 5,000, but it didn't look like I had that much, which I always hate. So <laughs> I always hate that. So um, I end up picking up Ace-8 suited on... No, I'm sorry, I didn't know you say it. I apologize. What did I have? Hold on. I know I had... Uh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I had King 8 suited. Um, I ended up just calling on the button. I love that hand. But it was the button, small blind folded, big blind, and one guy who was like under the gun, 
plus three, like right in the cutoff. I think maybe one off the cutoff, one off the cutoff. Yeah, ended up just calling. So the flop comes up, ace eight blank. So check 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 to me. All right. So I end up betting. Blinds were six hundred twelve hundred. So I already had twelve hundred in the pot. And there was like 48 in it, if I'm not mistaken. So I think I bet like three grand, um, maybe 2,400, right around there. Maybe 28, we'll split the difference. And like I said, I probably had like six grand to start. Guy ends up popping me. I'm like, oh shit. So I'm figuring I'm probably gonna need to catch up, probably. It is suited, so I have, I, and I have one of the cards that hit, I think the ace um, was suited. So I figured I've got backdoor. Flush possibilities. I'm figuring I need another eight, probably another queen, you know, but I need some work here. But I also figure I've got so much money in it at this point. I got to go for it. They were down to 40 people. Only the top um, top 15 got paid. So, I mean, I couldn't sit there. The blinds were keeping going up every 15 minutes and doubling. I mean, they were getting silly. So I needed, the average stack was 10 grand. I had 65 to 8, somewhere in there. So I needed to make some moves. Ended up making the call, and I figured he had an ace. I figured, you know what, he's got an ace rag hand. I need to improve, but let's see what happens. And this slick bastard, and I've played with him before. He is a good player. He's an older guy, good player. <laughs> I felt like Mike McDermott when KGB rolled up the aces. He pulls up aces, sitting on a set of aces. Then, just to make it more brutal and just twist the knight even deeper, just to do it, a queen hits on the turn. Yeah, yeah. Just to, you know, really stick it in there. So... Then on the river, and you know, it gave me a couple more outs there. On the river, it was a total blank. Raked it off, whatever. So I was out 40th place with not even a good story. But it did feel good playing. I felt, I didn't feel like I, you know, got a lucky on that hit. He just, I can't even say that. I mean, he outplayed me, obviously. But I can't even say that, that like, it's something I got to watch for. Because that's not, that's not a standard play. That's not a standard play I really got to look out for, you know, at the table. Because, I mean, yeah, people will get tricky with their aces. But that's just going to be one of those that you just take. Where I was at with, the, with where I was at in the tournament, I didn't, I couldn't afford to just sit back. And I really don't think I could have folded that. hand. Let me know what you guys think. If I would have mucked there, I'm pretty sure I would have had like around 4,000 in chips, maybe 4,500. And, you know, I, I would have had less than four big blinds. So my M would have been two and a half. So at that point, I'm looking for a, a, a shove moment. What do you guys think? Do you think that I should have simply taken my shot like I did? And be, knowing that I've got to pick up one of my, you know, probably other five outs, maybe with the backdoor possibility even more, or do you think I should have folded and found another spot to shove? I'm curious what you guys think. So... Ended up, like I said, out in 40th place, but am pretty happy with my play. Um, wish I could have had that hand back with the deuce. Um, but yeah, it sucks because those are the type of tournaments you can't have those hands. You know, you can recover from those type of hands in a, a, a deep sack Venetian tournament, even a regular deep sack tournament. You can have those type of hands and recover in a World Series event. But when you have a structure that's going up so quickly and you don't have many chips to start when the big you know when the average chip stack is literally 5m that's a problem you know you cannot make those mistakes that point in the tournament you know at this point we're three and a half four hours into the tournament you can't do that you can make those mistakes first round you can't make those mistakes at that point. And sadly, I did. So 
I wish I could have had that hand back. The ace's hand, eh, that's just life, honestly. Sure, you could say I shouldn't have been in the hand in the first place, but, I mean, what are you going to do? I like king eight. I'm sorry, queen eight. Maybe it was king eight. Whichever one, I did double the pair. So I don't remember if it was queen or king. I like both of them, honestly, <laughs> for some reason. So I don't really fault my, my play on the ace's hand. That's kind of just bad luck. But I do wish I could have had that, that deuce hand back. Or, you know, maybe after I got called on the flop, let the turn and river go. Who knows? Maybe he would have just checked it down because I bet out on the flop. Maybe I could have gotten away from it. But once I, you know, got called on the flop,